So what is a Goodison Oliver? Well, this is one of them. Keep watching and I'll tell you all about Goodison and the history and the connection between Oliver. So if you ever heard of a Goodison Oliver, you may not have known what it means. Uh, before researching this video, I mean, I've heard it from my grandpa, you know, from this tractor, my dad, you know, Oliver articles. But usually when they would say it, I thought it was a good son, so I thought they were just calling me a good son. Well, then I realized it was my brother, so. Goodison is actually a last name, so it's from John Goodison, and he owned the John Goodison Thresher Company. Hence the name, they were mostly building threshing machines back in the late 1800s. Their headquarters are in Sarnia, Ontario, Canada. By 1903, they were selling both the thresher and steam engines to power them. It's a little history on before Goodison became to be. A company started in a small town called Strathroy by the Craig brothers who moved to Sarnia around 1882. They ran the company for a few years, then they went broke. That's when John Goodison, at the time he was their agent, he took over. He was a farmer and he sold his farm and with his two sons, Ed and Will, took over the plant, then known as the Tunnel City Implement Works. They built plows, reapers, mowers, and threshers. In about three or four years, they just about went broke. So they formed a company which the bank financed. And then from then on they went ahead. They went out of the implement business and built thrashers, which is designed by Mr. McCloskey. And that's kind of how they came to be. John Goodison died in 1915 when his son, W.T. Goodison, took over the business. His other son, Edward, died about two years before his father. All right, here's a video of a John Goodison steam engine. There's a few things different on a Goodison Oliver. Here's a sticker on the frame, sold by Goodison Industries, LTD, Toronto. Now you're gonna have a, on the side panel, letter in here. My grandparents painted over this, but you can still see it. You should be able to see it. G-O-O-D-I-S-O-N. I would say go to sin and yellow letters. And then the shift pattern plate is different. And this is the original one. Right there. Distributed by Godison Industries, LTD, Sarnia, Toronto. Well dad, aside from the Godison identifications the sticker and the plate do you know this tractor came from canada yes i do youtubers uh my dad was buying tractors from a implement dealer in freedom wisconsin and he just sent a truck into canada to get them so this one was in canada and he talked my dad into buying it and it's our family tractor for many years And she's a good one, you know. Yeah? Yeah, it is. When tractors came about, Goodison realized it would need a tractor to go along with their threshers to replace the steam engines. So they didn't have a design of their own. Beginning in the 1920s, Canadian customs regulations stipulated that for tractors manufactured in the United States, 
to be sold in Canada, some of the manufacturing had to take place within the country. That is why you see the, the stickers and the, the decal shifter plate. They're able to get by the customs and sell the tractors in Canada. And I don't know if it was all of Canada, it couldn't have been. I think it was mostly Ontario. Now, this Oliver 99, this is the four speed, so it's got the, the six cylinder Waukesha with the four speeds at an old style rear end. This one must have came from Canada because it's got a decal here. Sold by the Oliver Corporation. It's hard to see because a lot of it's worn away, but Calgary, Edmonton, Winnipeg, it's like Regina, Saskatoon. So we know that Oliver's were selling tractors in Canada elsewhere, not Goodison's. So I don't know if it's just Ontario that had that. And the tractor I'm painting, I'm restoring my other videos, also has the same decal on it. And it's not a Goodison. And that's the one we went to Canada to get. And that was in uh, Manitoba, north of Winnipeg. So that was maybe different provinces have different laws. I'm not really sure. It's kind of hard to do research on that because I did and it's not easy to find. In 1920, Goodison would become a distributor for the Hart Park Tractor Company, providing them for Ontario. In 1926, they stopped making steam engines and also set up a dealer organization to sell their thrashers in the United States. By 1930, the Oliver Farm Equipment Company had merged. And you know from, it was Nichols and Shepard, American Seating, Hart Par and Oliver. And the Goodison arrangement they had with Hart Par would continue on with Oliver. They would sell the 1828 and the 2844. As Goodison's. Since 1936, some Oliver tractors built by Oliver have been sold by the Cockshut Plow Company under either the names Cockshut Hart Par or simply Cockshut. These include the models 1828, 2844, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 99. Also in 1936, Goodison started selling Silver King tractors, which was a small tractor before the Oliver 60s even came out. Sometimes there would be a Goodison dealer and a Cockshut dealer in the same town, and often they would compete against each other for pricing wars, and sometimes the winner wouldn't make any money on the sale. On November 1st, 1948, the arrangement with Cockshut would expire, and Goodison Industries would become the exclusive representative of Oliver in Ontario. Cockshut began building their own tractors with their first model, the Cockshut 30, coming out in 1947. By 1953, Cockshut offered four different tractors, the Cockshut 20, 30, 40, and 50. So they no longer needed Oliver to supply them with tractors. Later on, as combines became more popular, sales of threshing machines slowed down for Goodison. Goodison then changed their name to Goodison Industries Limited, dropping the thresher from its name as it no longer applied to what they were selling. By the late 1940s, thresher manufacturing ended, and by the early 50s, the head office was relocated to the Toronto area. By 1960, after White bought Oliver, the Goodison connection was ended. The Goodison name could be found on equipment they sold by brass plaques, shifter plates, decals, or stencils on the equipment. Other machines sold by Goodison are the Oliver HD Crawler, Decker Sprayers, Page Garden Tractor, and the Oliver TNT Plow. A little bit about Cockshut, since I've been talking about them in here. It was also a last name, founded as the Brantford Plow Works by James G. Cockshut in 1877. But I will discuss this more in detail in a future History of Cockshut video. Okay, so basically I'm looking at the location of 
the original Goodison factory. So here's Sarnia. So it was on Mitten Street between Essex and Maria. So it's either where River City Vineyard was or they had the Petrolia appliances and the other houses and stuff were. So looking at River City Vineyard, I'm just trying to see if there was any if there's any resemblance of the old building. Because sometimes places will Try to keep it for nostalgia purposes or refurbish the old building. This could be, I don't really know. You probably have to ask somebody from that lives in that area. Uh, I don't really know. Going on River City Vineyards website. The building was a YMCA before the current church, which they took over in 97. As you can see, Sarnia shares a border with the USA, so it wasn't very far to into Canada to get the Olivers to the Goodison factory. Brantford, where cockshuts were built, wasn't terribly far from Sarnia. About two hours, or 119 miles, or 192 kilometers. Here's a picture that's pretty cool. This is a, uh, looks like it's an Oliver Goodison dealer. Out front they got an 8866 and the manure spreader behind it and an old truck. This picture here I really like. It is a picture that looks like it's in a showroom of a Goodison dealer. You can see the 66 Goodison, 88 standard Goodison, and there is a Rooster comb plow, probably a plow master 100. Two bottom on the left that they're looking at. All right, here's an original Goodison brochure. I actually got this in Canada recently and got it shipped here. And it just has, well, it's brochure for the Goodison line. So here you can see the 77 with cultivators on it. And Goodison Industries Limited, Sarnia, Canada. Let's see what else it has. The Oliver 88. It's got the Roll Crop Standard 88. Call us a high clearance, but it's really just a wide front. Two and four row cultivators, check and runner planter. In the check planter, it, uh, I think that's the one that would place the seeds in a certain spot so you could cultivate it both in the field both ways. Uh, they had HGs in Goodison. Here you can see it cultivating. And everything in here would be sold to the Goodison. It kind of shows you that they didn't, didn't just have tractors, they had other things too. Here's the 90, the 99, the old style. And this Carol, the Superior Spreaders, Spring Tooth Harrow, the Plowmaster. Superior drills. Here's a disc plow. That's a lot of bottom though. Eight bottom. Fellowmeter. Pulverizer. And like a cultivator. Dump rake. Side delivery rake. Loader, sickle mower, and then here's your Goodison Thrasher, which is what they started with. That's 
how they got their their start and that's what led them to getting a tractor that they could sell have a be a, like a full line dealer so they could sell the tractor to pull around and power their thrasher with so that's when they got heart bar and all over uh, feed mixer and here they mentioned the Ann Arbor baler and here we got the 15 combine and the corn picker one and two rows Goodison Smalley line it's a successor to the pitchfork and shovel So that'd be your, your blower. You can use you can blow forage or grain with that. A mill. And here you got uh, like garden tractor stuff. So it's like a walk behind cultivator. Here's a Walk behind the sycamore. A wonder weapon for the war on weeds. So, Goodison Decker sprayers. There's another one, power takeoff models available. There's a superior spreader. There's a TNT plow. Sickle more. And here's the back. Brighton, Ontario. This has been a dealer chip then. Brands Combat Brothers. It's so also in, in this brochure, it shows here. Ontario owners of Oliver tractors sold under Cockshut name. Since 1936, some Oliver tractors manufactured by the Oliver Corporation have been sold by the Cockshut Plow Company under either the name Cockshut Hardpar or laterally simply Cockshut. These included the following models 1828, 2844, 6070, 8090, and 99. Effective November 1st, 1948, the arrangement under which these tractors were sold expires. And Goodison Industries LTD will be the exclusive representative of the Oliver Corporation in Ontario. Goodison Oliver realized they have an obligation to the owners of Oliver tractors to keep their tractors serviced and supplied with repairs, regardless of who sold the tractor originally. The Goodison Oliver dealer organization is being enlarged and alerted to take care of you. Get acquainted with your Goodison Oliver dealer and arrange with him to supply your requirements. I remember when the time comes when you want another Oliver tractor, see your Goodison Oliver dealer. So it almost seems like you can tell there was a competitive nature between Cockshut and Goodison. Because it almost sounds like Goodison was happy when Cockshut came out with their Model 30, their own tractor, and they ended Oliver's agreement. Because they were competing against each other at times and when they had two dealers in the same town. So it almost seems like the way that's written that, that they were glad for that. Okay, so here's a timeline of Goodison and Cockshut, how they related to Oliver. So I'll go over this timeline. First one, Goodison starts their partnership with Hart Bar in 1920. Then Goodison's partnership continues with Oliver after the merger of American Seeding, Oliver Chilled Plow Works, Hart Bar, and Nichols and Shepherd in 1929. Cockship partnered with Hart Bar and Oliver in 1936, and that went to 1948. 
cockshit all over it's ended with the introduction of cockshit's first tractor the cockshit 30 in 1948 Goodison's partnership with Oliver ends after being purchased by White in 1960. The next one's got two, so I'll go to the, this one. Cockshit purchased by White Motor Company in 1962. And then White decided to keep the cockshits going by using Oliver tractors, painting them red. So White continues the cockshit name by selling Oliver built cockshit tractors. From the 667, 70 to the 100 series, 50 series, and up to the 2255, 1962 to 1972. So basically, you are you won't find a fleet line 66, 77, 88 in a cockshut because at that time, cockshut was making their own tractors, but you had Godesons the whole time. So it's kind of a, a weird thing. Uh, that's why hopefully I clarified some of it because it's. A little confusing how it worked because for a while Cockshut and Goodison were selling Oliver's in conjunction with each other as well as Oliver themselves and and then you know Cockshut stopped and then later on Goodison stopped and Cockshut began again so kind of a complicated thing but hopefully this sheds some light on it so as far as which Oliver's you could get in just the Goodison only would be the Fleet Lines at 66, 77, 88 and then the Supers of the same. The Cockshit Onlys would be the 60, the 550, 1365, maybe some other foreign ones and the checkerboards. So like the 1600s to the 1650s. So. 100 series, 50 series, 55 series. And then both would be the 1828, the Oliver 70, 2844, 80, 90, 99. And then questionable ones would be 660s, 770s, 880s. Because those were built in 58, they started in 58. Goodison went to 1960, so there could be some Goodisons out there of them. Thank you.